how to use the 2023 recession to exponentially grow your wealth. Did you know that a staggering 98% of US-based CEOs are bracing for economic recession over the next 12 to 18 months? JP Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon also stated that the global economy would be confronted by a series of challenges next year, including increased interest rates and inflation that might spark a recession or even worse. This might sound negative and honestly quite depressing. However, as Warren Buffett said, bad news is an investor's best friend. In other words, if taken advantage of correctly, a recession could be an excellent opportunity to set yourself up for the rest of your life. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about what's likely to happen in the next 12 to 24 months and the biggest benefits you can get right now and what you could do to put yourself in the best position to gain more wealth. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Munif Ali, self-made multimillionaire who started this channel to share my life experiences so that I may teach you how to become more financially successful. So if you like this type of content, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Before we talk about how to use the recession to grow your wealth exponentially, I first need you to know and understand what a recession is. Sun Tzu in The Art of War said that if you know the enemy and you know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. Thinking about how a recession could affect us can be scary, especially for investors and for business owners. You might even be losing money now. Some are anxious and some are starting to panic. And that's why it's important to understand how a recession could affect us and our economy. Recession by definition is a business cycle contraction that happens when there is a general decline in the economic activity. It occurs as a result of consumer spending failing or falling dramatically. When a recession happens, it is usually accompanied by the following things. First, you have a significant increase in unemployment, a decrease in wages, a loss of consumer confidence, and a general decline in the values in almost everything, including stocks, food, energy, services, and real estate, with sometimes far-reaching global consequences. Second, a decline in earnings in businesses. For your reference, Snap Incorporated reported a $360 million net loss in the third quarter income statement, 400% more than their loss in the third quarter of last year. Meta, on the other hand, reported a $4,395 billion net profit, but it is still 52% less than their earnings from third quarter of last year. While Credit Suisse reported a net loss of 4 0.09 billion compared to 460 million profit in the third quarter of last year. It's also said that businesses are already earning recessions. Third would be layoffs. When people earn less, they spend less. This will in turn result in a lesser demand for goods and services of companies. And as a result, the company will begin to cut back on its expenses. And unfortunately, it usually cuts back on the employees first. In fact, Meta has already announced that they will be laying off some more employees in the fourth quarter. Now that we're done with all of that, let's talk about what you need to know about the recession. First, everything is less expensive. Just a quick fact, below are the highlights of some of the indexes for the last month at the time of this recording. The S&P 500 was up 4.94%, bringing its year-to-date decline to 17.46%. The NASDAQ Composite Index was up 5.85% with a 29.95 year-to-date decline. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was up 3.33%, bringing its year-to-date decline to 7.54%. Lastly, the Russell 2000 index was down 2.64% with a 19.53% year-to-date decline. It looks like the market has recovered a bit last month, but all of the major indexes mentioned are still in the red. This is actually not a bad thing at all. Instead of thinking that you are losing 17 to 30%, think of it as an opportunity to buy the same company with 17 to 30% discount. That is a great deal, isn't it? So reframe your belief since a declining market could benefit you in the long run, especially if you keep on investing. Second, there is less competition. As our economy is facing a threat of recession, established and bigger companies are scaling back on their expenses and probably in their production. This is the time that we will try to play it safe. But this could be an opportunity for smaller, more aggressive business owners. It is now easier to enter the market and as a small business, you can easily offer cheaper and better and faster goods and services, which will be very favorable during tough times. You could also get great deals for inexpensive supplies and materials. An established company can be trying to get more cash to increase its liquidity. And one way it can do that is by selling some of its inventory at discount prices. So watch out and look out for those. And during this time, a smaller 
smaller company could also increase its market share, while a larger company is actually cutting costs and may decrease its market share. And third, after every bear market comes a bull market. And remember the definition of the recession I mentioned earlier in the video, the recession is a business cycle contraction, and I'm emphasizing it's just a business cycle here. And remember, every cycle has its ups and its downs. So every bear has its bull market. For your information, the average length of a bear market is 388 days with 929 days or two and a half years as the longest. And the shortest was only 33 days during the spring of 2020. So don't be disheartened for there is always good news. As I've said earlier, the market crash won't last forever. And every bear market in history has been followed by a bull market. In fact, the market is not only able to bounce back from downturns, but it also has seen positive average returns over time. The S&P 500, for example, has seen a positive return of as much as 145% since 2000, despite experiencing four bear markets during that time frame. And if you look at the historical data, the S&P 500 stocks performed worse the year preceding a recession than during the recession itself. And two years after that price, returns were positive more than 70% of the time. For instance, four out of the nine recessions recorded from 1957 to 2009, it has an average positive return of 14.16%. In other words, this is a great opportunity to rake in some massive returns in the future. Before we continue this video, I'd like to know your thoughts about the recession. Some indexes recover with a massive decline do you think we are done with the worst or is it like the calm before the storm please go ahead and let me know what your thoughts are by leaving your comments down below now that we've gotten that out let's talk about what you can do to profit during these challenging times first cut back on your expenses reduce unnecessary expenditures and operate a tight budget devise a contingency plan in case your earnings drop by 20 to 50 percent and think of ways to cover that shortage Second, set aside some cash during a decline. Cash is king, and having liquid assets in a time of financial crisis is very important. It gives you the flexibility in your investing strategies and activities, and more importantly, it gives you the peace of mind as you have secured a safety net to fall back on. A good rule of thumb is to keep 10 to 20% of your portfolio in cash. Third is to protect your career. The worst thing that could happen during a recession is not the market crashing down, but that you lose your job while the market is collapsing. You need to do everything in your power to protect your career. Increase your value by learning new skills, by being good at them and making yourself indispensable to the company you work for. Fourth is to invest long-term. When the market comes crashing down, don't panic. Instead, carry on as usual as if nothing is happening and use dollar cost averaging. For instance, if you invest $300 a month in a mutual fund, when it sells at $30, you can buy 10 shares. If the price drops to $20, then you'll be able to buy 15 shares. You now have 25 shares with an average cost of $25. That's $30 and $20 divided by half. This is a great strategy for investors who wanna play long-term and those who do not want to worry about their investment performance play the long game fifth diversify your investments it is a golden rule for every investor to avoid putting all your eggs in one basket this is even more crucial when the market is experiencing instability when you invest in equity don't just put all your money in one sector for instance invest in tech transportation energy healthcare, all of those or some of those, but not all into one. You can also consider investing in commodities, EFTs or real estate investment trusts. Don't just stick to your home base. You can also add international stocks to the mix, or you can also add indexes or bonds since they are less volatile than individual stock. Well, the point is to spread your investment as well as your risk across several different sectors and not only focus on stocks itself or even worse than that, even one stock. The thing about recession is that everything is uncertain and you can project numbers or try to predict future market performances, but they all will remain just that, estimates and projections. We don't know what will happen with the war that's going on between Ukraine and Russia. We don't know what will happen with geopolitics or even maybe another international or local crisis. We don't know what's gonna happen with the weather. Anything can accelerate a global recession. The tips that I mentioned in this video can protect your hard earned money, but they're not all guaranteed. The key is to build a safety net so that you can minimize losses and earn profit amid this type of crisis. So set aside some cash, protect your career, invest in the long term, diversify your portfolio, look for deals, start a side hustle, and if you're a risk taker, even try starting a business where you see an opportunity. Thank you so much for watching and sticking with me until the end of this video. And if you wanna learn more about how to prepare yourself for a recession, watch this video next. Here's how to survive an economic depression.